everyone. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, it's a very difficult time for us. Um, as you know, over this past weekend on early Sunday morning, um, we lost uh, one of our members, Sergeant Thomas Sampatello. Uh, he was a veteran here for 32 years. Um, he was more than a uh, and a fellow worker, he was a he was a, a friend. He was a uh, bottom line. He was a great person. Um, this morning, we're going to try to recap what happened. We are going to try to answer as many questions as we can for you. You have to realize that this is an ongoing investigation, so there are questions that we just will not be able to address at this time. But again, we'll do our best to answer as many as we can. Um, we have uh, members of the Genesee County Sheriff's Office, Genesee County Legislature, Genesee County Manager, along with the DA's Office, City Faith Police Department, and uh, the City Manager here. Um, I am going to turn, well, first of all, if we go down through and people can introduce themselves so you know who's, who's talking. Under Sheriff Bradley Mazur. Uh, Chief Deputy of Criminal Investigation Division, Joe Graff. Uh, Chief Deputy of the Road Patrol, Brian Friday. Ian Sanfratello. County Manager Matt Landers. Legislature Chair Rochelle Stein. And I failed to introduce myself. I'm Bill Sharon. I'm the Sheriff of Genesee County. Kevin Fennell, DA. Joseph Robinson, First Assistant District Attorney. Sean Heibush, uh, City of Batavia Police Chief. Chris Camp, City of Batavia Assistant Police Chief. Matt Ludy, Detective Sergeant with the City of Batavia. Rachel Tabelsky, City Manager. And before we get started, I just want to Everybody that has supported us right from the get-go on this um, the community outpouring has been unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, I don't know how we'd get through it without without this, and uh, uh, I just can't thank everybody enough. I'm going to let the, the under sheriff kind of recap, along with the uh, Joe <coughs> and uh, Brian, and then we'll turn it over to the city police sheriff. Sure. Would it be possible whoever's speaking could be in front of the podium just so we can get their audio on our microphones? We'll do our best. Okay. At about uh, 12.45 hours, um, there was a report of a disturbance uh, in the 34 Rush Bar located inside uh, Batavia Downs. Uh, Sergeant Sampatello uh, responded to the bar along with uh, security members of the Batavia Downs. Um, the two individuals that were causing the disturbance were asked to leave, and while being escorted out, uh, the female uh, defendant became combative. Uh, she struck Sergeant Sanfrontello. Sergeant Sanfrontello was able to take her into custody um, during this uh, incident. Um, while taking her into custody, the uh, male defendant uh, returned um, to the lobby of the Batavia Downs uh, where Sergeant Sanfrontello and the female defendant were located. Um, and a physical struggle ensued uh, with the male defendant. Um, at that point, uh, multiple agencies uh, responded um, to Sergeant Sanfratello's call on the radio for uh, additional assistance. Sergeant Sanfratello had called for assistance. Uh, deputy sheriffs from our office responded to assist him along with uh, officers from the Batavia City Police Department, uh, New York State Troopers, uh, Mercy EMS medics responded as well as uh, civilians who were uh, in the casino at the time. Um, everyone uh, immediately began uh, assisting uh, Sergeant Sanfratello with life uh, saving measures which uh, were, were not successful. Um, both subjects were taken into custody at that point and, uh, and removed from uh, the facility. Members from the Criminal Investigation Division of the Genesee County Sheriff's Office did respond to the scene. We initiated a criminal investigation into the matter. Uh, shortly into the investigation, it was uh, the decision was made to turn the investigation over to the Batavia City Police Department. And at that point, we turned it over to uh, the city police. John? Good. Uh, first, I just want to extend our deepest sympathies to the family of Sergeant Sanfrontello and all the members of the Genesee County Sheriff's Office. This is a very difficult time for all of them and all of us. Um, Sergeant Sanfratello was a great man. Approximately 12.45 a.m., City of Batavia patrol officers overheard radio transmissions made <coughs> by members of the Genesee County Sheriff's Office. 
who were handling the disturbance downtown, located on the city line, half the property in the city of Batavia, half the property in the town of Batavia. Initially, a single Batavia police officer began heading towards the downs to assist sheriff's deputies as needed. Uh, while en route, there were further radio transmissions indicating that CPR was in progress and yelling and screaming could be heard in the background. Upon arrival by the Batavia police officer, they saw a male and a female subject who had been placed into custody but continued to violently struggle with sheriff's deputies and other staff, uh, Batavia Down security and bystanders that had jumped in. Further, the officer saw other bystanders as well as sheriff's deputies defendants to the Genesee County Jail where they were held pending further investigation. Officers returned uh, to assist the Sheriff's Department personnel. Uh, EMS had been on location and despite life-saving efforts of Sergeant, Sergeant Sanfratella was uh, declared deceased by the Genesee County Coroner's Office. At this time, administrative staff of the Sheriff's Office, the Under Sheriff, Chief Deputies as well, myself and the Assistant Police Chief had arrived along with other City uh, Police Department members. After a brief consultation, the decision was made to turn the criminal investigation over to the Batavia Police Department. Detectives from Batavia PD immediately began the process of interviewing and deposing witnesses as well as reviewing video evidence that was available. The District Attorney's Office responded and consulted during the entirety of the investigation. Charges were filed later, that was put out in a press release. Uh, both were processed by Batavia PD members and arraigned in centralized Raymond Park Court. This is an ongoing investigation and the casino was very busy that night. We're asking anyone who may have witnessed this incident and or may have digital evidence, videos or photos to contact our detective bureau. We have created a QR code that will take them directly to a site where they can drop video into our evidence. Uh, we have some uh, on the table here if you would kindly take those and distribute those. I also want to recognize the Batavia Down staff and several bystanders who jumped in with, without hesitation to render aid and assist. Um, a lot of them have already come forward, but we're asking anyone else with information to come forward and, and talk to us um, as this is an ongoing investigation. Thanks, Sean. At this point, we will uh, open it to questions. Um, again, we'll do our best to answer them. Chief, I wonder if you could elaborate a little bit on what the struggle was between the defendants and the sergeant. They were resisting arrest. Um, it's obvious in the videos that the uh, subjects were not going into custody without a fight. Um, so they were physically resisting arrest very violently. What were they, what was the violence? What were they doing specifically? I, I can't get into the details of, of what uh, that was, but uh, the video demonstrates that they resisted arrest violently. Can you talk a little bit more about the use of a metal chain or a piece of jewelry mm -hmm. in that incident? Yeah, so during the uh, altercation, uh, you can see one of the defendants, a uh, male defendant, remove a, a large piece of jewelry from around his neck, a chain or a, you know, a metal thick rope um, that was used during the struggle. So I can't get into the details of, of what uh, happened with that, uh, but it was used as, as part of the attack. So court documents say they, he used that to put the sergeant in a chokehold, is that right? No, that's incorrect. The court okay. documents say you, the sergeant was placed in a chokehold. He was placed in a chokehold, okay. Was the, uh, did he swing the chain freely or did he wrap it around his fist? And I can't get into those type of details uh, as far as the investigation. The sergeant used a taser, which was initially reported um, in the release. Did that uh, strike anyone what, or what happened with the taser when he discharged it? Yeah, we feel that it did strike the male defendant, um, but it was not effective. Uh, unfortunately. Has there been any uh, blood work on either defendant to, to determine their degree of intoxication if there's other uh, drugs involved? I will turn that question over to Kevin. I don't believe we've... There's been no um, direct blood testing that I know. I know it's procedure for the jail to do a uh, screening for drugs and alcohol. Um, my understanding is they were not initially cooperative with that process, however, uh, may have ultimately done that. When we spoke to the prosecutor yesterday, you had indicated, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that there had been an autopsy done, but perhaps you did not get the, the report as yet to know the exact cause of death. 
Um, yep, yep. Has that been determined yet what the cause of death was? It has not. The autopsy has been done, as you mentioned, but the, the report has not been released. Was that Monroe County or who did the autopsy? The Monroe County Medical Examiner performed the autopsy. The, um, you discussed, you know, that there's CPR and that civilians and security staff uh, were directly involved. I wonder if you could elaborate on, like, who performed CPR, whether civilian or security or Tavy Down staff, and also were civilians directly involved in tangling with uh, the defendants? And um, did also you describe additional officers being involved when they got on scene and, and having uh, a physical altercation? Are there any charges related to that with those officers? Could there be? And were any of those officers hurt? Uh, to my knowledge, no other officers were hurt during this altercation. Um, I will leave the charging issue up to the DA's office. Uh, however, uh, there were several members of Batavia Down security staff, as well as bystanders that were both performing CPR on and off, as well as um, holding the defendants down uh, in, in an effort to help us uh, get them into custody. So it was the answer no effort everybody. by everybody. Yeah. Are you able to clarify just a little bit on the body camera? I understand the sergeant wasn't wearing a body camera or it wasn't rolling. Were responding officers, did they have body cameras on? Were those turned on? Yes, uh, the responding officers all had body cameras on. My understanding is Sergeant Sanfratello was not wearing one. He, he was not wearing one. District Attorney, I wonder if you could, the charge that you've levied is aggravated manslaughter or the public watching may not be familiar with the legalese. Can you explain what that implies, what you're getting at? The aggravated aspect of the manslaughter is because uh, the deceased, Sergeant Sanfratello, was a police officer. And manslaughter was, says what? In this particular case, it's intent to cause serious physical injury, uh, causing death of a police officer. The arrest report mentioned uh, deadly weapon with the charge. Is that just statutory language, or are you considering the chain a uh, deadly weapon? It's a statutory language, but the chain is the focus of, of that uh, language. We'd asked yesterday with the, uh, this, the deputy uh, if there's the possibility of further charges here. Uh, what would you say to that? I think you indicated there might be a grand jury that would rise to possibly with this case. Well, the grand jury will certainly uh, review the evidence. The evidence is not uh, in. We have the investigation, as you've just heard, is ongoing. Until the investigation is concluded, we cannot predict what additional uh, charges, if any, might be filed in connection with this case. So we'll wait to see. The two defendants were uh, arraigned yesterday. Are they still in custody? My understanding is yes. they still are in custody uh, on bail. Sheriff, sure, I don't know if this... This is a question for you, Chief, for you. Could you describe, help us understand what the two defendants were doing prior to this incident that got them uh, removed from the casino? What were they doing? Well, uh, they were in the uh, area, as I mentioned earlier, uh, 34 Rush uh, Bar. Um, they were causing a disturbance within the bar. Um, the staff there uh, refused to serve them. Um, they were asked to leave. Um, they continued to cause that disturbance, um, requiring assistance from Batavia Downs Security and Sergeant Sanfrontello. There was a burglary charge levied against Ms. Wilcox. Um, you know, why, I guess why? What, what was the need for the burglary charge? Well, the burglary charge itself is stemming from her um, being combative with uh, the officer and the security staff at Batavia Downs when she was asked to leave. Uh, thereby indicating that she was remaining unlawfully in that building. And Sheriff, in the initial report, uh, it said that Sergeant Tampertello was there on a uh, special assignment, um, yes. I believe. Had there been issues um, at the casino prior to this, um, anything specific with either the defendants or um, staffing levels with casino security, anything like that? Why was he on special assignment? We have a, um, uh, an agreement with the TV Downs for weekends to uh, uh, have a uniformed officer on their on duty as a deterrence basically um, we we took that on late fall last year um, I'm sorry what was the rest of your question 
Oh, just why why he was there and okay. he was the only one that was on special assignment. He was the only one that was there. Yeah. So that evening, it, there was um, several events going on. There was an MMA fight and there was a concert. Um, there was a lot of people there. Um, any requests from the Downs for extra extra patrols because of the events that no. were ongoing? No. Sure. How do you think Mr. Elmore's actions contributed directly to Sergeant to Sergeant Sheftel's death? To his death, yeah. I think I would. Well, that, the DA. well that is, is part of the investigation, and that's certainly uh, going to be uh, significantly answered when we get an autopsy report. Um, we can't really address at this point um, the um, mechanics of the death, so uh, we'll have to wait on that. Uh, Kevin, uh, yesterday after court, um, Mr. Elmore said, quote, my life over. Um, would you consider that an admission of guilt, and is that an admissible statement, a statement that could be used against him? Well, uh, any statement that he makes uh, spontaneously, whether it's in the uh, course of uh, the crime or uh, his detention thereafter, including at court, uh, can be uh, used, in my opinion, uh, should it become relevant at a, a later trial. Would you consider that uh, an admission of guilt, or is that something to further examine? I would uh, consider that uh, an admission that uh, he has done something that he regrets deeply. Can you talk about the timeline here? From what point were the two defendants here told to leave, and then at what point were first responders on scene to try to revive the sergeant? Uh, that's not something I can talk to at this time. I don't know if the sheriff can or not. It, it was within minutes. Um, the, the, the two subjects were asked to leave the bar area just minutes before um, CPR was in progress. There were, there were several fights going on, uh, you know, while I was there for 20 minutes, even after while you guys were there. Is this fighting, you know, an issue there? No, uh, to my knowledge. No. Called there? No, I think this goes back to the question that was asked there. We've had minimal, minimal complaints at, at the TV Downs. Uh, Nothing ever to this extreme or fights. To, uh, no. I guess furthermore, too, uh, how long was the altercation between the defendant and the sergeant to the point where he became unresponsive? Um, it lasted two to three minutes, um, the altercation before the sergeant became unresponsive. Can you talk about Mr. Elmore's background? I think there have been reports about his criminal record in the past. Uh, can you say anything more about that? He is known to law enforcement. In what way, can you say? We, we've had contact with him in the past. Has he ever threatened a police officer to the best of your own? I don't know. I'd have to review that. Um, Kevin, when I was in court yesterday, um, of course, Mr. Robertson, uh, Robertson uh, represented you, and I don't want to misstate anything because I couldn't really hear, hear well, but there was a discussion about orders of protection. And I thought I heard something relevant, to, and I know there were for Mr. Uh, Sergeant Santopatillo's family, and I couldn't exactly hear what Joe said, but something about, was there something about threats to family from Elmore's family or friends? I know the Board of Protection co covered third-party contract. Could you just address, are there issues with people associated with Mr. Elmore and the Santopatillo family? I have uh, been advised that there were uh, some statements made, uh, the content of which or the degree of, of uh, the statements themselves, I'm not aware of, but they were sufficient for us to ask uh, for orders of protection uh, more, of a, more of as a prophylactic measure to make sure that there's no contact. Sheriff, are you able to give our viewers a little more of an idea of who Sergeant Sanfortello was and anything you might want to add just about him and his life and his character. Oh, wow. Um, unbelievable person. Uh, I know Tommy since he began. Uh, and uh, he was just an incredible human being. He was always there for everybody else. Um, he had many important functions here in the department. He ran our civil department. Uh, he was on the State Share Association uh, accreditation program as an assessor. Um, he oversaw our Darien Lake details. Uh, the, as you know, we always we have many, many concerts out there, many, many thousands of people. 
he ran them flawlessly. Tommy was one that, uh, you know, we counted on. And, and, and if Tommy was involved, I didn't have to worry about anything. Um, um, Ian is here. Is, would he like to say anything about his father? Well, we're going to get to that. Okay. I'd like to add that I also have known Tom since uh, he first hit the road. And uh, we talked on a regular basis about uh, cases and issues. Uh, he'd often call and say, I think I know the answer, but, and he always did. Uh, but he never lost his enthusiasm uh, for the job, uh, for what he did. Uh, and uh, he was a very, very good uh, police officer, and he was a better man. Uh, so we will all uh, suffer loss for a long time to come, uh, and we will miss him uh, dearly. Uh, I'd also uh, like to uh, express my thanks for the community support thus far, the outpouring of support not only for the San Fratello family, but in the assistance of this investigation. Is there any possibility that there would be a change of venue of, for this case at all down the line, you think? I can't predict that. Sheriff, sure. how is your office doing? After this. I would say on the surface everybody's holding up but it I don't think it's really hit home yet we have a few of them to go through um, all in all I think everybody's doing the best they can uh, again the support that we've got gotten from uh, the community from other police agencies uh, City of Batavia Police Department has been unbelievable so we're working through it. You know, we've had counselors in, involved, and we, had, we, uh, we had some meetings the other night with, you know, with, with department members, and we will continue to have those. Um, you know, that's Sheriff, is there any um, indication that drugs or alcohol were an element in the suspect's alleged behavior? I think alcohol, oh, I know alcohol was involved the other night, um, but drugs or whatever, uh, I have no clue. Thank you. Chief, you had put out a request for more video from the public or anything, as you mentioned, the QR code. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are thinking, okay, it's a casino. There's mm -hmm. going to be tons of cameras everywhere. What would you say you need further from the public? Is it more definitive, or what are you looking for at this point? Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. There's a ton of video. Um, it's a casino. Um, we do know that. We did, uh, with cooperation from the Tava Downs, uh, get all of that into, into our possession. Um, however, any video that we can get from any angle is important to us um, to identify potential witnesses um, in, in other actions that may have occurred uh, that may have been outside of the cameras of the casino itself. Um, so that is extremely important to us to be able to identify anything else that's out there. Do we know if there was a relationship between the two defendants? Uh, it's my understanding they're in a relationship here. And then Sheriff, would you be able to talk more about the memorial out front here? Um, we were firing uh, the patrol car yesterday and there were only a couple of bouquets of flowers and now it's just filled with all these flowers and gifts in honor of them. That was something that was uh, brought up by one of our uh, members that he has seen in the past. Um, it's another tribute to Tommy. As you can see, it's it's gained a lot of momentum. Uh, the community is really behind us, and it's a demonstration of that. Um, we'll have that out there for the rest of the week. Um, so whoever wants to contribute to it. Um, my, my impression, even before this, is that Sergeant San Fratello is one of those rare in individuals that has like almost no enemies. Everybody seems to oh, like yeah. him. And would you address, what about his personality made him so likable? I think you can go back to even his early years, he started out as a, a EMT in an ambulance, um, then went on to become a volunteer fireman with the Alexander Fire Department. Started his career uh, here at the Sheriff's Office as an emergency services dispatcher, went on to the uh, road patrol. So I think that really, you look at Tom Sanfrontello and that's what he did, he served. He served our community, even from, I think it was, he was a late teenager when he started as, a, as an EMT in an ambulance. So I think that goes right to Tom's character. Tommy never said no. You know, if you needed something, Tommy was there. It didn't matter who you were, uh, what time of day or night it was. Uh, if he could help you, he'd help you. And, uh, I, the guys always knew him as a resource too. 
you know, if they had something they weren't quite certain of, you know, okay, who do we have? Let's ask Tommy. <laughs> Tommy will know. And uh, yeah, he's going to be he's going to be missed. Sure, just, what that would goes you say about the <coughs> memorial service? I mean, I know usually there are other elements of law enforcement who want to take part and be there, and sometimes there are processions. Has anything been thought about that? Well, uh, we expect the, uh, uh, a large crowd uh, as with any death of a police officer. You know, it's a brotherhood. You know, uh, we expect to see, you know, many, many, many police agencies there. Uh, it's going to be at the call arena out at the uh, Genesee Community College, just calling hours and the, and the actual service. I have a follow-up question to that, but I think the chief wanted to say something. Yeah, about I just it. wanted to piggyback on what the sheriff said. I mean, Tommy was a resource for every law enforcement officer in this county, not just exactly. within the sheriff's office. I mean, I personally called Tom on many occasions to ask um, for advice on something, uh, whether it dealt with a civil matter or whatever, and he never said no. He A snippet from the videos is before this encounter occurred Tom was talking to people within the casino and he was smiling and laughing with them I mean that's just the personality that Tom had my follow-up question and this is more for planning purposes is I if I'm remembering correctly and I didn't go back and look this up but when for uh, deputy board narrow it was in a church smaller venue I believe the media was outside call arena is much bigger are we going to have access to the service or are we going to remain outside and that I'm just not, we're still either working. way I'm just wanting that for planning purposes we will have a staging area for media whether or not we can get you inside that hasn't been determined yet is this for both the visitation and celebration of life or just one I would say for both okay. I'd like to wrap this up um, Tommy's son Ian is here Tom uh, son Ian works for us now uh, he's been with us as a correction officer Ian has a statement he'd like to make. He is not going to be answering questions. So please respect that. Um, Ian? You want to come up here? Good morning. First, I would like to take the time to thank everybody who has reached out to my family with their condolences and support, the countless people who have dropped off food to my family, and most of all, the enormous law enforcement community for all the support we have gotten. Secondly, I would like to address something that I saw from yesterday's court coverage. I know my father would not want any threats of any kind being made to the family of the suspects or the suspects themselves. He would know justice will be served in the correct way. Lastly, I want everybody to know my dad, <clears throat> my dad was one of a kind. An amazing dad, son, brother, and co-worker. He loved my sisters, Lexi and Kyla, with all of his heart and loved to spend time with us. I know we will all cherish the memories we have with him. He will never be forgotten and he will be missed immensely by all that had the chance to not only know him, but talk to him and he will always be loved. Thank you. Okay, again, I thank you. Um, and we'll move on from here. Thank you so much.